is uh, Fook, and today I want to show you a utility that I find very helpful for converting video and audio files, and that's uh, FFmpeg. And the way you get it is if you're on Linux or Mac and you have Python install, you can install it using pip, which is just pip install FFmpeg. If you have Homebrew installed, you would install it with the brew command, so brew install FFmpeg and off you go. You can also download the source code directly and compile it for your system. Um, if you're on Windows, you can uh, Google for FFmpeg and download the uh, installer, which would then install the, the program onto your computer. FFmpeg is a uh, command line utility, although if you look, you may be able to find a, a graphical user interface for it, uh, but I prefer to use the command line. So what's the use scenario for FFmpeg? Well, the main one is to convert containers uh, of video from one format to another. Uh, so for example, I've downloaded two videos from YouTube. One of them is a drone footage from the DJI Inspire 2, and the other is just a cover video. Um, you can see that the drone footage is an MKV, so it's a Mastroska container. Um, we don't know what kind of streams are inside this container because MKV containers can support multiple video and audio streams. And then on the MP4, um, we don't know what it has inside it either. But I can use a tool like M MKV Toolnix to add the video in and examine the different streams. So on the drone footage, I can see that my video track is pretty standard. It's a MPEG-4 AVC. So uh, no problems there playing out of multiple devices. But then this audio format is the Opus audio format, which um, I would suspect not a lot of, not a lot of uh, devices support. So if that's the case, you're going to have to convert it. So not only the container for the video, but also uh, the audio stream inside of it. A lot of times what you'll find is that you may find an MKV file um, that has streams that your device would support, whether it's a media player, an iPad, or another tablet, or whatever. But the container itself, the MKV, is not being recognized natively, and you just need to convert the container. And that's where M FFmpeg really shines. Uh, but sometimes, as, as with this file format, uh, the audio needs to be converted too. So let's go ahead and do that. So the command is FFmpeg. And the first switch is uh, dash i for input file. And then I'm just going to specify my input file. I'm putting it in quotes because there are spaces in it. And this bit is the magic part. So I use the switch dash c for convert, colon v for video. And on the video, because it's avc and I don't need to convert it, I can just copy that stream. And I do that by using the keyword copy. I use the same switch dash dash C, but then colon A for audio. And this time I'm, I'm going to convert that Opus audio stream to AAC. So the syntax is just dash C colon V for video or A for audio, and then the name of the codec you want to convert to. You can insert other options if you want, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but they would follow along the same pattern. So you just insert different options as you need them. But once you're done, you just specify your output file. So I'm just going to put output.mp4. Now, FFmpeg is smart enough to know that the input file is an MKV container. It'll go ahead and ex examine what streams are in there. And based on the switch you provide to copy the video stream, and to convert the audio stream to AAC, it will go ahead and do that. And it knows from the file name of your output that you want to uh, put it into an MP4 container, and it will go ahead and do that. So this is a complete command, and I can just hit return. FFmpeg runs pretty fast, um, and you can see that it's already converted. So here's my output file, and if I play it, It's exactly the same. The only difference is that it's now in a new container and the audio stream has been converted. Now, FFmpeg will support a variety of uh, file formats. So MP4, MKV, 
WMV, uh, MOV, uh, WebM, so all of those. As long as it has a regular container extension, FFmpeg will pretty much recognize it. The other thing you may want to do is that if you were downloading a music video from YouTube, so I've downloaded this cover video. So there's the video, but I don't want a video. I want to convert it to an MP3 so I can load it into my iPod or another music service or whatever the case may be. And there you can use uh, FFmpeg as well. So what we would do is FFmpeg again, dash I for input, your input file name, dash C to convert the audio, colon A to specify the audio stream, and we're going to say mp3, and then the output file name. And this time I'm going to specify .mp3. So notice that in this scenario, I didn't put dash cv anything. I just specified the audio stream only. And based on the container being an mp3, ffmpeg is going to know that uh, I can't put a video in there. And you can see here that it's going through the entire video and you can see the time code. And at this point, it's done. That was a quite a big file. It's 1.5 gig for the video. But you can see that the MP3 itself is only 2.3 megabyte, so a lot smaller. And if I, de if I were to play this, let me make sure that uh, it's going to play in VLC. It is. And if I play this, I would just get the audio, uh, no video. So there you go. So now if I had this named the way I wanted to, I can copy it to my device or copy it to a music service like maybe Google Music or, or what have you. Uh, anyways, this is the, the very, very basic overview of quickly converting video and audio formats uh, using FFmpeg. I hope that you find this useful and that it inspire you to uh, learn more about this powerful free tool uh, for all of your video and audio needs. Anyways, enjoy and have a great day.